everybody. Happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you are having an amazing weekend. If you haven't checked out the chicken and garden update yet, do go and do that. There will be a link in the video description. So today's Sunday Musing is going to be one where we are going to be talking about charging station reliability. In case you didn't know, I have just driven this pickup truck, Adira Tal, all the way to Colorado while towing a car on a trailer. And then we deadheaded back to Portland. And well, while the truck was amazing and we had a great fun trip, the one thing that let us down again and again and again was the reliability of charging stations. Either they were overheating in the hot weather or there were issues with connectivity or payment or just broken stations. And as a JD Power survey has revealed this week, well, Tesla comes out top when it comes to charger station reliability and customer satisfaction. No surprise there. And the other networks, they are really struggling to keep up. So today's question for you is this, how do we either enforce or encourage charging station providers to actually get their bloody act together and bring reliable, affordable, high-speed charging to everyone around the world? Now, some countries, have thought about using a system where they penalize networks who don't provide a high enough service. Uh, others have thought about tying it to the carrots of incentives. You don't get incentives unless your network provides a certain level of, of, of service to its customers. Now, I, we've talked before about how we keep charging stations reliable, but today I specifically want to focus on how do we make sure that charging network providers aren't just lining the pockets of the C-suite or their shareholders, but instead making it easy for EV owners around the world to enjoy rapid charging wherever they happen to be. Luckily, all of the charging stations we used on our trip were were functional enough that we could either charge up to move to the next one, albeit at a slower level, or we were able to get a decent charge rate. But I know that as more electric cars join the roads, we are going to see more pressure on these charging networks to ensure that all four bays for Electrify America, sometimes six, sometimes eight, are functional. Tesla, of course, doesn't have a lot of the challenges of other networks because it controls the entire process. It decides how fast chargers operate, it controls the connectivity between the stations and the car, and it also ensures that payment is properly taken care of. And of course, if something goes wrong, because Tesla designs and owns the whole ecosystem, it's much easier for it to, to fix. Whereas with an open charging network where any car from any manufacturer can turn up and use there's always going to be some, some communication issues between the different standards unless everyone sits down and hammers out these standards a little bit better. And so some of this is down to better standardization for charging, but some of it should also be down to acceptable levels of service. Now, it feels very much like EV charging today is a bit like where high-speed internet was back in the late 90s and early noughties. And when I say high-speed, I'm talking about half a megabit per second. I remember getting that when I was at music college um, because I wanted to have a decent internet connection. I managed to convince my, my roommates to go halvesies on an internet connection with me. But, you know, back in those days, the network was not very reliable. It, it had a lot of teething problems. And it feels like we're at that point now with EV charging. And I hope that we can get to the future where we have the equivalent of super high speed, always on internet that's super reliable. But I'm not entirely sure that we will. I think it's, it's a challenge. And I think that one way of solving it would be to have more charging stations. But another one would be for, for charging providers and charging networks to have local maintenance staff who are on call 24 seven, who have a good supply of parts and can run out and fix charging stations when they stop working. And that is something I don't think a lot of networks are doing right now. We've heard lots of excuses about parts availability and the parts shortages. But at the end of the day, if you are running a, a company, it is up to you to make sure you have enough parts and spares on tap. So here at the channel, we actually have a spare teleprompter glass. I broke one about eight months ago and realized that I should have had a spare. So when I bought 
a replacement for it, I actually bought not one but two. So we always have a spare part ready to go in case something fails. In a similar vein, one of our cameras, our Blackmagic camera, is uh, on the fritz right now and it's got to go back to be fixed. And because we've got fully charged live, because you've got a slew of vehicles to review, we can't be without that A cam. So we've actually had to buy a second one, which we will eventually use as a, as a backup. Um, so that when we send our initial camera away to be fixed, we've got a spare. We don't have to worry about reducing our output or reducing our quality just because we have a different camera um, or we don't have that camera available. So if we can do it as a small company, why can't big charging networks do it? That's one of my questions. But also, I'd love to know what you think in the comments below about how we enforce this to make sure that all of these charging networks do play ball and that they offer a level of service that is as good as a gas station. Because at the end of the day, if Joe Bloggs and Josephine Bloggs want to have a reliable experience, they're not gonna go from an internal combustion engine vehicle to a battery electric one if the charging networks are not playing ball. That is it for today. If you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. And don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There's a video link in the description. And if you really liked it, why not leave us a super thanks? It really does help everything that you send goes towards helping us keep the company running and produce more great videos. And thanks on behalf of the entire crew go out to everyone who makes this channel possible and that includes everyone who supports us on Patreon and YouTube as well as those of you who just watch and share the videos. If you are a supporter at the charged up level you'll see your name right here on my right hand side and if you just joined we are sorry your name isn't showing yet. We do render these lists about once a week but we've been so busy we haven't been able to do it for a while. Thanks to our self-driving tier supporters Chris Maxwell, Pedro Mio Pinheiro, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Rajota, Brophy Wolf, Tazlet in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Dan Bear, Jim Burness, Chris Ascentar, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Denny Hyde, and of course, super out of this world. Thanks to our Starman level supporters. They are Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Rory Litwin, Joe Bresney, Reed R, JP Fagerback, Russ, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, Kevin Burrowbridge, John Lyons, Andrew Graham, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, and last but not least, Ian. If you'd like to be part of that amazing list, it is super easy to do. You'll find links below to Patreon, YouTube, or you can support us through Bitcoin, Kofi, or buying something cool from our swag store. And don't forget, if you are coming to see us at Fully Charged Live in a couple of weeks' time, we've got some great new swag that we're going to sell exclusively at the event. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to check out the garden and chicken update. And as always, keep evolving.